I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. First on the agenda is Certificate of Compliance for 45 Ridge Avenue. I move we issue a duplicate Certificate of Compliance for 45 Ridge Avenue. The original was issued and never recorded, correct? It was many years ago. And we can't record a copy of what we have and no one knows what happened to the original. Years, what, Back in those days, we used to give the people their original for them to file. And this is what's happened a number of times. You give them something, they don't file it. And later on, uh, it crops up, and now we have to go through the whole thing all over again. Okay. So, Bob made a motion. Anybody second that? Aye. Second. Been made and seconded. Everybody agree? Aye. All the way around, Rachel, we passed it. Thank you. Okay. Next one is partial certificate of compliance for four Silverwood Road. Yeah, Silverwood Road is part of the 40B project off of Birch Street. It's the first house that's being sold. Uh, we're issuing, we like to issue a partial pending landscaping and vegetation. In other words, they can't get the vegetation in and mow it twice and, and still sell it this the next week. So okay. uh, what we do, we issue the partial, uh, if the banks go along with it, and then they'll have to come back later on in the summer when, the, when everything is done and get a complete one. But this allows them to sell the property and move forward with that? Is what? That, this allows them to sell the property and to move forward with that, with that part of it? Yeah, yeah. So they can... Then they have to come back to get a full. Yeah. So, yeah. It's... Uh, it gets into, in other words, it's in the hands of now the person who bought the house and the people that built the house. Right. And one of the other, you know, wants to be smart enough to come back and get a full certificate. Okay. But whatever it is, it's still recorded on the deed. So if nobody does it, 10 years from now when they get ready to sell it, they'll have to, to come back that. and ask for it then. Okay, Bob Bob made the motion. Uh, discussion. Oh. Um, so that would be due to the regular um, OCC that was applied to the project? Yeah. Okay. You know, very small, and I haven't talked said something to you. Don't be surprised if they come back and look for something off the roadway, because that roadway is separate. Okay. And, you, and any, any other time when there's been, you know, the road, there, we have an order of conditions for the roadway, yep. and then we had an order of conditions for each individual house and they're only asking for the house and I hadn't really thought until just now but they go to pass if the lawyers are smart they're going to pick up that the, the house, roadway the road is probably written against all the lots or it should have been right exactly for a certain type of landscape so we may have design. we may have a problem any more discussion on that one? I remember the time that we, we have a vote the roadway and said each individual lot has to be in the house. Bob made a motion for a partial certificate of compliance for 4 Civil Wood Road. I'll second that motion. Everybody agree? Aye. And just ask about that. All in favor? Aye. I'll explain something else about that. Yes. Rachel, we voted to give a partial certificate Excuse me. of okay. compliance. Yeah, okay. Has you. everybody had a chance to go over the meeting minutes of March 26th? Yes. yes. Any questions? No. Um, did we discuss the uh, trees? Yeah, I didn't see that in here. Um, 
box on the back? Second store. I just I'll just give Rick a couple minutes to read all the rules. Yep. Good. Nobody, actually nobody made the motion, so we need a motion. So I'll, I'll move to pass those minutes from March twenty-sixth. Second. Second. Everybody? Yeah. Right. Aye. Good to go. Keep that moving. Okay. Uh, approval of purchase of flags. Uh, we. We're in need of flags at Veterans Memorial. Yeah. We finally got them all down. Yep. They're pretty well ripped up. <clears throat> and we can, we used to be able to get American flags from the veterans. But they buy the but, bigger ones now. But, uh, they buy the bigger ones. Yeah, they buy the bigger ones. We can't fly a four by six no. because it wraps in the cross arms. So we have to have three and a, three and a half or three, three by five, five. Three by five, whatever. So it means we have to buy that, and we have to buy, buy our own POW and state. Okay. So we actually need all three of them. I'll volunteer. I'll, I'll purchase the American flag. So. And I'm going to buy... That's ask, awesome. We'll, we'll buy the other flags. Rachel, can you handle that? Yep. Yeah. I just how need many, you to... Um, how many three by fives do you need? Authorize... Huh? Just, just one. I mean, I think we need to we need to bring it up at a later discussion about the poll at the Helen Mark. We need to do something. It's kind of yeah. We need to either reset it or, or do something. But I figured that was later down the road. Let's put a big cedar post in this place. Make a flagpole. <laughs> all right. Email. We'll just fly it over to the helicopter. That's all. Email regarding Corey checks from members. Mail is that in the mail? Certainly. Do you not need to take a vote to spend the money on the flags? How do you handle it? Isn't it under like 40 bucks or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's down enough that we can Okay, I didn't know if we needed to take, I didn't know how it was handled in the past. Okay. I think it's, 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 it's going to be over $70 or something like that. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, if we Thank have you. to, we will All right. Thank you. I think we did down. Didn't I bought one. T I went out over years ago. Didn't we? Didn't we do like, like seventy dollars or something yeah. we could spend without? This one, huh? oh, we can spend more than that. Yeah, yeah, we can spend a lot more. Than oh, okay. Yeah. As long as we vote, yeah, we don't need the exact. No, money. but I thought we had it so Rachel could buy some. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Okay, maybe I'm just confused. Yeah. I was confused then. I'm sorry. That's okay. So. Um. Email regarding Corey checks for members in the mail. What are we doing about that? I don't see that. This one? Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Everybody get a chance to read it? Or? No. Well, I can look at it on the Heidi, I can't pronounce that last name. Chadwick. Chadwick, okay. I'm sorry I didn't respond to the email sooner, but I had to run the question by Miss Snee. Mrs. Yeah, I this, is, it, this is email between Rachel Conservation and the school. Oh, okay. We just had to make sure that both have current core checks to be able to participate in school functions. If you have any other questions, feel free to... What happened was my son's class is um, going on a field trip hosted by the Watershed Association. And so when I saw it, I emailed this teacher and I said, could the agent and I come along on this field trip? I think it would be great. They're going to and look at some of the points. She's, hmm. she, this is her response. She said, we can't attend because we don't have current Cory checks oh. on file. Okay. So then it came up that should we go ahead and have it done so that if events in the future come up, we can just go because we'll already have this on file. I think it has to be pretty current because I dealt with the, um, the people that do the, the prom, prom angels and I get it every year. Oh, yeah, every it year? Has to, it has oh, to, mine okay. has to be done every year through Boy Scouts. Yeah. Used to be the schools, but I don't do the school thing anymore. Okay. But again, <laughs> it is so something we can get overnight, so if we're going to do it. 
I would like to be Cor I would like to be Corey Church or something. I feel that I'd like to do it. You do a pretty cool thing. Do I? Can we? 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 Can but where is what I mean? Like, how do I go about getting There's a website. You can get it from oh. online. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, well, like I said, where, where it comes to work, if you have any questions, I know um, when I did it for the town years ago, I just, Rick Wall set it up for me. And through the, through the school, the school does it. You fill out a form, the school does it. Oh, maybe that's scouts, what the scouts, do. scouts do it themselves. Okay. But. That's usually reserved for Marshall Fair doesn't do it for education in the state. We get all sorts of grants and stuff. I think if you're going to participate in a school project, then you should take it upon yourself to have the quarry. I don't think anything should be forced on people. If you're not going to be involved, it doesn't apply. Whatever you guys want to do. Okay. If you want to say if you want to, take it upon yourself. Yeah. I don't think as a board that it should be mandated. I think it's you want to do a quarry and do education, and that's part of doing education. Yes, well, I don't think it's just the education, town. it's with uh, the Boy, Sc the town's it's boy it's Scouts, them. it's, it's every time you deal yeah. with anyone under 18 years of age now, you... you if you want to go to school during school hours, you have to have it. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, really? But honestly, in, in I'm shocked class. the town doesn't have it for all the, all boards and departments, really. My kids have been out of school a long time, but I recall volunteering in the school and filling out a form. Yeah. And then waiting and then um, getting approved and then good to go, go volunteer. Okay. Maybe we should run this by Sabrina. Okay. To see what the town policy is on. I, I really don't have a clue. Okay. But maybe we I'll should ask. run it by Sabrina. I, I don't know. Thank you. It's up to you guys. It's up to you guys. But again, now I, I'll tell you, if we're going to be doing any projects as a board, you know, the, but even tree planting, okay. if we're doing tree planting oh, as a board, then we should be covered by Corey before we have anyone under 18 helping us or we're... I think the, it's a, the rule isn't that if you have somebody that's 18, it's just with a group. Like, you got there's certain groups that require them, certain groups that don't. Yeah. Like the school department, they want Corey yeah. to go in the school, but we don't need one for people that are going to plant trees, or just for example. Right. The, the Marshall Fair does it this way, that if there's an issue with working mm -hmm. for the fair, as a carnival, they all get quarried because they're in and out. If you're not working for the fair and you're individual, you volunteer or you're paid, there's never been a need for a quarry. And I think it's a personal choice. I think if you're going somewhere and you're you're projecting yourself into a, a educational system, otherwise you can't really push it on people. It's a public event and people do public events. I, I'm hearing a lot of conflicting opinion, and it sounds like we're all not sure. Is there a source that can tell us the bottom line? Is it if I'm an individual doing something right, but if I'm part of a commission doing something, maybe the answer is different for a quarry? Okay. So yeah, I, I'll so, run it by Sabrina. Sabrina or okay. uh, Ed, all right. just have them check on it. I, I don't, I don't have an no answer. All right. So. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll table that for now until Rachel talks to Sabrina. Okay, so we're a few minutes late for our 710-717. Request for determination of applicability RDA for 105 Furnace Lane, Smith. Anybody here for that? Yeah, we'll get Rachel doesn't come back right away with somebody. We'll listen to it later. No? Okay. We'll move on and we'll put it at the other end of our. Okay. We'll come back to it afterwards. Okay, 720, which we're a little closer. Um, notice of intent, 8 Bryson Way, Bayo, DEP file number SE 561013. I'm coming over here. Just to, so, yeah. the camera. Yeah. Okay. 
They want you up at this. Yeah, that's where I'm going to go. Figured that out already, Bob. By looking in the nest, looking in the viewers. Only a good kind of trees killed. Okay, so is there anybody else involved with Bryce and Wayne? I think we do that. I'm sure there are butters here. Yeah. Butters 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 butters. Unfortunately, this is what they give us for a room, so if you want to fill in over this side, try to find a chair. Thank Here's you. a chair. It's up to you folks. Thanks. Another chair, another chair. It should be inside the... You have to get oh, inside can. the door to see if you're the meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Is everyone signed in on the uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm going to sit down there. That's cool. That's one of them through that one. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Simon. If you're here for Bryson Way, we just need you to have a come in through the swinging door to make it official. Okay. Okay. All right, we're going to start, open the meeting with, or open the hearing with, Mr. McGovern. Your name? Terry McGovern. Okay. For the record, Terry McGovern from Spenbeck and Taylor representing uh, Rick Vale McGrico, who is the applicant. Um, brief history lesson before I get to what we're proposing <clears throat> is that we're in here in front of the Commission tonight on a project that was originally approved back in 2004 as part of two things. One was the original Bryson Way subdivision um, where there were two houses, and two house lots proposed back then. Um, the existing house which is back approximately in this location now. Um, at the end of a paper cul-de-sac, it has paved driveway, T turnaround, detention basin, had a wetland delineation done back then, 100 foot buffer, and showed a new proposed house replacing a house that uh, went down sometime in the late 90s in this location with a, an existing septic system closer to Old Washington Street, but still inside the 100-foot buffer zone to the BVW. This is a copy of the subdivision grading plan, which is on record at the Registry of Deeds and was signed by the planning board at that time. What date? Oh, 3505 is the, oh, I'm sorry. David Dorsey is, um, yeah, March 2000, March, for, March 14th, 2005. And it is on record at the Registry of Deeds. Subsequent to that, um, the same company, O'Donnell Engineering out of Kingston, then applied to and received approval through the Pembroke Board of Health for that individual house lot sewage system. This is an enlargement of the previous plan, which shows the BVW on this side, shows an isolated wetland on the south side, and shows the detention basin here in the middle. And that septic system was the requisite distance off the detention basin at that time. And they had done a number of test holes, or at least a couple of test holes, and they seem to have been done under the uh, quasi-guise of a repair because the soils in this area, they did two a uh, total of three test pits, um, did one perk test in this area. They show an abandoned well in that area as well. Um, this plan was approved, had gone through the um, Board of Health Review Engineer David Primer's checklist he had some comments, they addressed them. The plan was approved by the Board of Health at that time. Now that was back in 2004. Subsequent to that, both of these houses, the second house was built with the septic system right here in the front yard. They just show the edge of it on this plan. Did that plan get approved by conservation? I don't know that off the top of my head, but I'm gonna assume that because this plan was approved and the subdivision was approved, I. I'm going to assume that it did, but I won't swear to it. 
Um, septic system for this house is in the front yard. So what we've submitted to the commission after doing numerous test holes in this area because there was some um, concern about the underlying material, knowing that as we did other test holes as part of the subdivision, which this is a separate entity from, um, we got into this area and noted that as they did on their logs, but they kind of characterize it differently, is that the lower layers of this whole front area are fairly dense silt and clay. And in fact, when we did our test holes around the edges of the, the field, actually I have a blown up picture here. This is the driveway, There's the house, septic system for the existing house is here. And the area on the plan showing the proposed house and septic system in 04 is here, which is basically is some large pines along Old Washington Street. Is the isolated vegetated wetland in here? Is the abutting property where there's a depression in here that holds water, as well as a fairly long driveway that goes back to this house, fairly long driveway that goes back to the house next door? Um, the soils in this area we determined, and with Lisa Cullity from the Board of Health witnessing, we determined them to be not the best material for siting a septic system, especially if you want something to last 20 or 30 years. A lot of silt and clay. Uh, the area is previously disturbed in here. Um, some building rubble in a couple of places. I actually hit the remains of the old foundation in one or two places doing the test holes. So we redesigned the 2004 plan based on those results. They're a little bit gray, but we have four test holes in this area out in front of which we have the logs noted down below. And pretty much from about three feet down, they all say silt loam, some of them say clay. And they have approximately two to three feet of fill on top before you break into what was the original parent material. What we did was we went up into an area adja immediately adjacent to the existing system, which is in the T driveway turnaround here on the other side of the detention basin. Likewise, we did um, a total of four holes in that area and found much, much better parent material underneath. It's much more granular material um, and will allow the sewage system to last considerably longer than it would have had it been built in this location. We're showing the house pretty much approximately in the same location as the original plan. We've just flipped the garage and the house from one side to the other, put the garage closer to the old Washington Street side, just so you get a little bit more noise buffering. Driveway a little closer to old Washington Street as well. Um, the house we're going to put a little bit of fill around the house. We'd obviously like to keep it up um, a little bit. We're showing <coughs> an erosion control barrier that's gonna run around the edge of a grading going around. And the proposed system, which will consist of a pump dosed system into leaching chambers will now be proposed to be constructed in the area of this T driveway turnaround which is going to be eliminated as part of the subdivision roadway. It was all part of the original two lot subdivision in 2004. There's no real necessity for it. It served to provide a turnaround for the second house which now has a driveway off the, the new road which is in the process of being constructed. Um, this sewage system is proposed to be 76 feet from the bordering vegetated wetland, which is across the street, which was redelineated. Um, it's about 40 feet from the isolated vegetated wetland, which we've shown in the same configuration and reaffirmed on the ground. Um, we're showing grading around it. Your isolated vegetated wetland um, is not jurisdictional under Title V or DEP regs, just the bordering vegetated wetland. And this plan was reviewed and approved by uh, both the Board of Health and by the review engineer, David Primer, 
Um, back during February, he had one or two minor comments about venting because it is a pressure dose system. The tanks will be, septic tank and pump chamber will be in the front yard adjacent to the driveway of the house. Again, kind of in a similar location of where they were before. Except now we'll be pumping up and around via a two inch forest main, which is proposed to be sleeved all the way along here next to the road. It'll be sleeved and, and insulated, pumped up to the system and dosed in this location. So we have a primary that we've shown here, colored in in yellow, with the reserve area, long narrow reserve area, immediately adjacent to it. Um, and we have a temporary slope and grading easement onto the second lot. The grade um, at the top of this, right now this driveway as it exists is about elevation 69. The top of the system will be about one foot higher, so it's going to be approximately the same grade. We're actually showing it pitching back towards the roadway a little bit, kind of a high point here, about the two-thirds way, and it'll pitch back in this direction. But this will be lawn over it. It'll blend into the yard next door, so we'll actually be removing some impervious area in this location by taking the pavement out. Um, there is a little bit of fill underneath it'll likewise be need to be removed which was the driveway base and then underneath that we have pretty much a loamy sand and gravel um, perk rates ranging from 4 to 15 minutes which is not bad for that area 2 minute per inch means it's it's just about beach sand so we <clears throat> we also have the required 4 foot separation to groundwater as required by title 5 and the Pembroke Board of Health regulations so this system will be, even though it will be not really per se mounded, it will have the um, required separation and again blend into the yard next door. So what you'll see visually is you'll see the pavement gone and you'll just see this slope kind of continue out. I go back to the picture again. I have a quick question. How you, have can to, you, you have to wait till, we're, oh. till he's done, then we'll okay. open it up for questions. So visually, this T turnaround, this driveway, will go away. Now the road is being constructed along here. And this area, pretty much right across this expanse of the driveway, will become grass with the system up in here. And the new house is proposed in there? The new house will be pretty much right in the middle of this field, again, in the same place that it was proposed back in 2004. Let me go back over to the, the proposed plan. Um, we, do we need approval to take that, or do you need approval to take that asphalt out where it was put in under a planning board? That was actually constructed as a driveway. And it's actually proposed under the new subdivision but that's going to be the access. No, I, might, the only I, might, I might just challenge that because that that was put, that was a mini one of those mini subdivisions as I remember it. Yeah. Can, can the I access answer that for you. Um, so Rick Veo, I'm the owner of it. So it was approved as a paper subdivision originally, yeah. and it, it the design of it was built for the layout of the subdivision, yeah. but it wasn't made to adhere to the same construction standards right. as. Uh, uh, my my question is, do we need to run it by? Because if they said. Well, they did approve that. Yeah. It, it is as part of the plan. new subdivision. Okay. Right. There's this a driveway. Yeah. And obviously, this being an individual lot, I didn't see a need to bring the entire subdivision yeah. plan, but the roadway, the driveway for lot two, now accesses as it's proposed. Here's our T turnaround. The road continues beyond pretty much in this direction. That driveway. A lot of this will actually go away. That driveway is going to access over here now. So there's a fairly yeah, large it's, expansion. It was kind of technical, driveway. but I don't want to get caught in a technical thing later nope. on. Nope, that's all, that's all been done through the subdivision approval. Can you, or can you explain isolated area subject to flooring not jurisdictional for anyone who doesn't mm -hmm. know yep. what it means? And why it's that way. Okay, be glad to. <coughs> An isolated land subject to flooding it has to meet the criteria of holding a quarter acre foot of water, which means mm -hmm. if you think of it in 
fairly straightforward terms. If I had one acre of land, it would flood to a depth of one foot. So a quarter of that figure, a quarter of an acre of land, I don't know how big the town hall site is, but a quarter of an acre of land would have to flood to the depth of one foot, roughly 11,000 square feet. Um, in taking ground shots, and that's for a period of time, it has to be a sustained period of time. It can't be just for a couple of days after heavy rainfall and then it goes down. This area um, doesn't meet the size criteria but more importantly, we did topography. We gridded this area through. And the depth through this whole area, actually all the way through, is about six inches, six, between six and eight inches. So you ne have neither the depth nor the volume, e the, vo well, the volume or the area to make the quarter acre foot. Um, again, right now, or as recently when we had some of the very heavy rain events. Those from DEP standards don't count. It has to be for a sustained period of time. It can't hold it for a short period of time and then dry out. A bordering vegetated wetland, which is on the other side, has a hydraulic connection that continues for some distance and then make, eventually makes its way to a body of water. And if I go back onto the picture, for a moment, um, it might be helpful to note that there are, there are three things going on in this area related to water. You have a detention basin that was part of the original subdivision approval. Water runs via a runoff right here, down into it. Um, fills up, it has some leaching basins that had some leaf and debris in them. The, the water has been full. Some work has been done in here to release the water. You have the isolated vegetated wetland up against this property line. And then the first abutters right here likewise have an area that would probably be considered an isolated wetland because it shows up as kind of this elongated depression, holds water through a good part of the year. On the other side of the driveway, likewise, is another area over here that holds water, although to a lesser degree. But even though these were disconnected, there is no connection running further south in that area. This does connect eventually going up the other way to a larger expanse. Um, also, you have catch basins, one of them approximately right here, another set a little bit further down that um, basically carrying the elevation of the road through and the depth of the pipe going through. It's a 24-inch drain pipe that runs in old Washington Street. So water coming off this road, we have likewise have a set of, actually this one's visible, catch basin here as well. And so the runoff through, the, the general runoff characteristics of the site are not going to change by this proposal. This water, right now this driveway splits probably at about the two-thirds point, which is the way we're going to continue it, except it'll be grass, so the less impervious surface. The house being placed in this area is originally proposed in 2004. Likewise, everything from the front of the house is going to run towards Bryson Way, and the small amount of the rear yard again as shown on our site plan. And that house, by the way, is proposed to be to the deck. It's 35 feet off the line. Uh, to Old Washington Street, it's about 46 feet off the line, and another 10-foot deck. So you have about 45 feet of lawn or yard area, roughly, behind here. Likewise, the same thing to Old Washington Street. The driveway and this front yard is all proposed to be pitched in this direction. And it pretty much follows the contours. The high area of the site is up in here a little bit more, so we're actually going to pitch a little bit more runoff in the other direction. Uh, it's a little bit of a brush line through here in the back. And this area gets lower as you come over towards the fence. Any questions, Mr. Clark? I have one question. Um, who, who owns the property behind there, the, the big green area? The, it's just off your map, of your picture here. 
Well, I feel like is it, it's between like High Street and Barker Street. Okay, going out to the back. Yeah. That, at least going off in this general direction, is part of the Bryson Way Extension subdivision. And then behind that, there's, um, again, brief his very brief history. In the 1980s, uh, a large chunk of this land, I don't have the picture big enough, but from the Animal Rescue League, uh, the beginning of Old Washington Street, through to Highland Drive, almost through to High Street, it actually touched High Street a little bit further down, um, was bought by a developer by the name of Dick Woodland. He built a small extension off of Highland Drive, sold the, actually died before he could develop the rest of the property. The property sat for a few years, and Animal Rescue League built their facility in the mid 90s um, they were around for four or five years, roughly, and then Mr. Vail purchased the property and developed it, and now has since sold the subdivision. Um, the land in between, behind the subdivision, which again isn't part of this hearing, um, my understanding is that remaining land in between has been or will be conveyed to the town of Pembroke as part of the open space. As part of this, it was it was project? conveyed during that subdivision process. Yeah, I yeah. think you know we came before you guys about donating okay. a, a little over half the land that I purchased from. It wasn't actually from the Animal Rescue League. It was from someone else yeah. who was going to develop it uh, for the the facility. Then the Animal Rescue League was going to sell it for a 40B. I stepped in, bought it, and said, "I'll do the minimum subdivision I can possibly do." To get my money back and I'll donate the rest to conservation town of Pembroke that's what we did um, when when I sold it so that accounts I want to say there was 50 ish acres um, and I want to say 29 were turned over um, I believe that was the that was the number um, if if I may just jump in with one thing sorry. Um, so again as Terry said I mean it's important to note here is that the house that was here, the house that was subsequently built in this paper subdivision, none of that is changing in terms of contours. It's not bringing any more water this way. Everything flows back to Bryson, which will flow into its own um, drainage system, which was approved, along with the drainage that's out here. There's a couple of interesting points, is that these areas that hold water out in front of the abutters' houses they're holding water for one and one reason only, is that when the house was built, it was never filled enough so that the water came back to the street um, and flowed properly. It's getting trapped in here. Um, if, if that had been filled like the driveway was or how you know much of the land was, that flow would be totally different and this wouldn't be ho holding water. But this, you know, as you can see, it's all staying dry in here. There's not going to be any more runoff in this direction. It's all graded to go back toward the subdivision. And as Terry pointed out, we're actually removing some of the impervious surfaces and the house that would be built, unlike the one that was there originally, would require to have roof drains, um, you know, retentions and whatnot. So there won't be any um, unmitigated drainage going, or, you know, changing Sorry from what we have now. Not that I, I disagree with you at all, and all, but that piece in the middle when it was filled in, the engineers said it would drain. We had a lot of discussion about it, uh, and the town would not allow them to push it all out to the, to the road. But the engineers swore up and down that that would not flood like it is flooding, like right. we told, said it would. Now, we did, there, and I don't know if this is the case in some of these other areas, we did discover pipes that were completely clogged, I mean yeah. completely root filled. Yeah. The minute we cleared those, everything changed. Yeah. Uh, it was a major difference. And I don't know if that, if any of those pipes exist in any of these other areas, you know, the other ones aren't on my property, so I couldn't yeah. explore them. But there is a chance that there may be pipes that go from those areas to the drainage system in the road. There isn't. Hasn't been since 1959. Oh, but let's, you all set? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any any other members of the board have anything to say? Your name, please. Park. We live at 55. 
the picture I have from three years ago showing the wetlands is in three years already out of date. Is the existing house is the existing system. This is all wetlands. It shows the whole front thing and the swale that's there now passing under the fence through Kelly's yard and passing onto my property by that much. This is so out of date in three years. My entire first and second acre are underwater. I had water coming almost to my house, which is back here on the third acre. If you let them fill in that swale, all of this is going to shove over even more. The, this water now is over here in my neighbor's backyard at number Can you show me where that is on this picture? Where? I can't tell which where I'm That's where they're, they're going to build it. It was upside down for you. Oh, okay. So, so the map you're showing, that's where the new building is going to go? That's the company. Okay, it's where's, that, where's uh, Old Washington that Street? Like this is Old Washington. Washington. Yeah. Okay, so this is Old Washington. That, what, is that the He's Animal Rescue League? League? Here's Bryson. Oh, okay. Here's Bryson. This is Kelly's property here, which you see with all the blue. That's all flooded. This is his house. The swale is over here. Their septic system is in the front yard. How can you put a house here and put a septic system in the turnaround, and their system is probably not even 50 feet from the turnaround? Their whole front lawn is a septic system. You can tell by that picture that there's a septic system there. You can't put a septic system here and a septic system here. You just can't put the two of them that close. Where, if where, you do, from, 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 from this who? water and that water is going to flow through Kelly's yard, which it's already doing, and it's going to flow into my yard. What you see right <coughs> here, this much of my property is flooded. All of the water against Kelly's fence, all of the water in Kelly's yard, that little portion right there is what's in that picture from three years ago. My flooding now is gone from Kelly's fence through my entire first acre and into the house over here. She has water in her backyard now around her swimming pool. Is that just since this past winter or is it? It's, this has been going on since 1959 when my husband moved into the old house out front. When we wanted to build on the property, we wanted to build here behind the old house and rip it down. We hit water at 4-6 and 4-9 between Kelly's driveway and our property. The town said no, we could not build because the water table was 4-6 and 4-9 back in 1984. Now the water table is back here. My house is back on the third acre from the road. Luckily, knock on wood, I didn't get any water this year. But this house has a sump pump. When the power went out, she got eight inches of water in her cellar. Sladen's house that's right here has two sump pumps running round the clock 24-7 going in at the storm drain because he has a brook or a stream under his house. That flows over here and floods all of these lots. What I now, I mean, d if, did anybody from the Wetlands Commission come out and take a look at the water situation that's already existing from the brook and the stream and the, just the lowness and the wetness of this when land. When you say a brook, is there a brook on the deed anywhere? A, a under brook? Sladen's house, there no, is no, a, is a small brook and stream and well, it flows under his house. He well, has. Is that documented? Like there was a brook before they put the house yes, there? Yes, it was. He so has a, he, when he bought that deed. house, it had sump pumps in it and no, they no, run 24-7 no, no, into no, the storm drain. I'm, I'm asking, is there a documented like on, I own, I've owned property. That house was built before uh, we moved in. I've so owned property before, and it had an old brook, and it said, boundary, middle of old brook. Was there any such boundaries or brooks documented on this site? I wouldn't know, because that house was built before my mother-in-law's house there's was there. a brook underground, I mean, that's, you really can't. It runs through his basement, and he pumps it up with a hose into her yard, and she had to go speak to him about pumping it into her yard, and her basement flooded. Um, and now, what you this little bit you see here now, this is all water, and it goes past my house now, and the split level that's here, she's got water in her backyard. So now I had to have an engineer come to my house, and it's going to cost me three thousand dollars or more to put a pipe from the pond on this side of my driveway and the pond on this side of my driveway, join the two, run them down the side of the property back to my fourth acre into a swale just to get me so that I don't have to look at the ponds of Pembroke every year in my front yard. Yeah. Um, you want to put a house here that's going to displace more water this way into Kelly's land, into Louise's house, into my property. 
this land has silty soil. When we tried to build our house, they told us it is the first top five feet of this land is black silty soil, which he said holds water. And he said the only way you'd get rid of it is if we removed five feet of soil from two acres of land. We couldn't afford to do that. So this is surface flooding is what you're talking about. We had an engineer at our house last week. He put some kind of site gauge thing, and he said all the water in here is groundwater, and it's not going to go away so, unless we pay to drain it. So I've been looking at it every year since 1959. I call it the Ponds of Pembroke. I have two ducks that mate in my front yard <laughs> every year. That happens she in a can few attest places. to it, and Tom can attest to it. Did you? Did you? Did you build this house? No, yeah, that's no, that's Kelly's no, no, house. No, the one. Yeah, oh, okay. The, this the is my house, house back house. here. Okay, is Kelly, Mr. Kelly, right there? Did your engineer not tell you that that area would not flood? I wasn't that involved in building it. My daughter. All right. Well, I I happened to be, and we had numerous meetings with the engineer when this was done, and he swore that this area would not flood. flood. The water would be gone within a 48 hour period afterwards and that's the only reason some of these things were done is because the engineers assured us that yeah that it wouldn't happen and it has happened it has happened and, right. and that's it's, not it's, it's just going to keep doing. coming as the as the what is it the the sea level rises so we already have an issue now and now i'm going to have to pay somebody Right. To drain well, my well, two well, ponds. Sea level isn't affecting this no, water no, up here. I don't know. All I mean, know it just no, that's, no, that that's this picture from three years ago is all out of date because it shows only a small amount of water coming on my property. This was a four six and a four three per chest out water, here. When you mean water coming on your property from the sky, falling uh, on the up land? through the ground. My husband looked at it one day and he actually saw it kind of bubbling up. If so you try to bubble it up, it wasn't the water. The, it was in the air. Street drain, in the the water doesn't bubble up. The air was coming up. When you see bubbles, that's the, the air is being displaced by the water sinking into the ground. When you see bubbles. Well, if you if you take a ride out to my house tomorrow morning, first thing you can see the ponds are still there. And my concern is if you let them build a, a house here, the foundation will displace more water onto Tom, which will put more on me, which will put more on the Samaro's house. This picture here was from three years ago. In, this building. isn't even accurate anymore. This entire area, so. my whole front yard to the property line of the next house over is flooded. And it was flooded from the street. I was driving through water since December to get to my house. This picture here is in three years. It's already out of date. This water line now is all the way over to here and into her backyard around her swimming pool. Well, it's silting up. You know, the water gets wet and there's no place for it to go. It forms a silt pocket, just a silt. You know, that's what happens. Well, the engineer that was at my house said, my front yard is underwater due to groundwater. And I'm just thinking if you put... Well, a septic surface, system close to this septic water. system, it's going to push water in a straight line so you're going to have that house, their septic system, Kelly's house, my house. So all of the septic system is going to be in line with our two houses, which is going to put even more water on our property. How is it going to put water on your property when they're underground systems? Is that water? Can you swear that that water is going to go? If a family of four is in there with showers, toilets, dishes, unless dishwashers, it bubbles, unless it bubbles up out of the is the of water going to go like this yep. and not like this? Well, it's going to go like this, and it has a degree, and then there's clay. You have to have a, like, a geology, a geologists come in and do core samples in that whole neighborhood to figure out what's going on with the hydraulics. And I don't think, what you're having is surface flooding. It comes from the air, it lands on the ground, and it puddles. And that's what nature does. I don't think it's um, the sewer systems. It's never been this bad. The sewer systems aren't recharging that much into the aquifer that it's going to come up unless you see it bubbling out of the top of a sewer system. It's not coming up. It's going down. Well, the thing is, the town would not let us build out here. That's why my house is back on the third, almost fourth acre, and my septic system's in the backyard. Well, because the court test we had back there was nine feet down. I think they safeguarded you from building in a bad location. I think you should thank them. Oh, I know. But the point is, when they did our perk test in our backyard, beyond where our system is, he said, oh, you have the best soil in the town of Plymouth. It's perfect at Pembroke. It's perfect for drainage. And he said, 
we're putting your cellar floor three to four feet above the highest water table in the last hundred years. Guess what? We got water in our basement and it cracked the floor. Hydrostatic pressure. Huh? Oh, yeah, we'll push it this up. is the highest water in 100 years. <laughs> right. Yeah. So the, what I'm saying to you is in 1984 when that land was parked and again in 1994 when it was parked and again in 1999 when it was parked. Three times. So do you think by not putting this house there your problem is going to go away? No, but I'm, I'm just saying that anything going in there that's going to have people putting more water in the ground, it's just going to push more this way and knowing that there's going to be a septic system here from the existing house and a septic system there I'm thinking there's two more sources of water flowing towards Kelly's house flowing towards well, my if you, house if you have an aquifer problem and a, and a water table problem there's nothing you're going to do and nothing that a system is going to do in the neighborhood to change it it's hydraulics it's there and water is going to take it, water. it appears to me that the, wa the, the wa from what they're showing me here, the water is going to be going the opposite way right. than what you are saying. It's going, to no, I mean, yeah, the way. it's going it's downhill to towards them. It's going to go it's down. Yes, please. It it like like if somebody goes out there and looks at it right now, the water on that front lot that you want to put a house on, on the back edge of that, the water is flowing under Kelly's fence in a his shot. I'd like to give the engineer a chance to respond. Yeah. yeah. May, it may have raised some more questions, but a couple of things. Um, for us to, the septic system, um, we're required to maintain a property line setback of 10 feet. So you can put a septic system right up to 10 feet from another property line, which the septic system on the, on the other side is about 20 feet off the property line. This one is 10. So we do meet both Title V and Pembroke's requirement. Um, another thing is that at the end of the driveway now where this T turnaround is, we're actually proposing to put a five foot high membrane, which we're showing here. This is a, a solid barrier, if you yeah. will, a rubber yeah. 45 millimeter membrane all around this end of the sewage system, all the way around this U shape, which basically will, if I were to kind of flip this and say, here's my sewage system, and this is the end facing your house. There's going to be a big U-shaped barrier around this made out of rubber membrane. And what that does is it pushes the effluent, if you will, so that it, as it disperses, it goes in this direction to the north. It doesn't break out of the slope. It doesn't get into the groundwater. It doesn't least, get into the wet. So that's another thing that, again, is required by Pembroke Board of Health, that we show that we're not going to have breakout or water coming out of the ground in this area. Um, again, with respect to the grading on the site, um, I can't speak to how your engineer necessarily designed your house. We're actually showing this house um, probably not being more than, say, roughly two feet into the existing ground. So at least from the future homeowner's perspective, they're not going to have water in the basement. We're barely getting down into the top and subsoil. Uh, again, because of the material in this area, especially the building rubble, we've shown on our test pit logs pretty much through the whole site. Yeah, there is approximately between two feet and three feet of fill from what was there when the prior house existed. And again, I'm, I think I've given you some pictures of the uh, there's some black I, I, and white we, pictures. We had the property when the old place? house was there. Yeah. So okay. I can know. I finish, please? Um, so the grading around that house, top of foundation will be at 74.5, and we're leaving two foot of reveal, exposed foundation. Um, right now, the grade that's coming through this backyard is 68 to 69 in this area. So yeah, there's going to be some material up against the back of this house. We could lower this grade and flatten it a little bit. There's no reason we have to leave it up. But the grading from here forward is going to break in this direction. We're showing a 72 to a 70. Down here we have a 70 at the street. We're showing a 72.5 at the driveway to a 70 at the street. So that's a two and a half foot pitch from the driveway over to Bryson Way in that direction. It's not going to pitch this way. And it's, it's clearly shown on the plan here where the contours are going to wrap around. Our low point is out here. We have another low point in the area of 
from and Terry, that's forcing water into the street drainage system yeah, as opposed into the street to just running. System. Um, one thing we did make note of as we were out there <coughs> recently, um, and it's only it's nothing we can control, but it's only for general consideration. We did shoot the elevations of the drainage structures here, um, the rim elevations here, because this depression is pretty deep. This isn't just a shallow depression. This is a few feet deep. Um, the invert out of this catch basin here with the grounded or the rim grade at 67, which is pretty level with this, is down at 62. So you've got five foot of depth in a catch basin that's up against this property. Rather than trying to drain water all the way around the house, you may be able to pour into the back of this catch basin and put a four, even just a four inch pipe no, no, that's not my house. Her, my house is the one at the bottom. Oh, you're here. Yes, you're and, I, here and I have a, okay, I have so ten inches of water in my front lawn. All right, because I was going to say there's also another catch basin down here, but if that's not allowed, not allowed to tie into the, yeah. tie into the town drainage. Okay, didn't know if that was a potential solution or not. Yeah. But there are, you know, there's a couple of catch basin systems in here. I say with that that one there. I first got on the board here, and the guy promised us up and down all day long that system would not hold water. And it's held water ever since oh, so they've installed it. So it's it's a wet area. There's, there's not oh, yeah. a lot you can do. Yeah. I mean, one of the things, too, is that you know you have these driveways that are trapping. Right, they're trapping you know, it from it's, one It's trapping water from here to here. I mean, this water is not breaking through to the back of your yeah, property. Happen. It's no. trapped there. It's trapped the there. runoff that you're getting on your property is coming from the... Driveway. This side of the driveway down and staying there because it has nowhere to go. I mean, this was filled, this was filled, and now you've trapped the water there. No, yeah, we didn't fill the front lawn. They wouldn't. The driveway from that catch basin there it ran right across the driveway in the y yard. But it's always done that. Right. No, that's always why it's been wet. That's what I'm saying is, is there's no, you unless you could tie into the town the system, there's no easy way to get rid of that And we water. didn't fill that front land. Um, we didn't have well, the money the at the time. The driveway, driveway beside, 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 beside the one beside the one. Okay, I understand the difference now. Filled. This gentleman has, has something to say too. Yeah, because the driveway that's there, we should have raised it, but we didn't. And because of the wetlands, I think that's what I think. Perhaps someone did some more eloquent than I can. I just want to make a look at this. Okay, can, can, we, can we have it quiet for a minute? Just, just one more thing. Mr. McGovern finished, and then we'll t let this gentleman talk. Just one more thing. Um, again, just as a, a, a point of fact, from our test pits that we did throughout this general area, I've, I've heard the numbers four, four, six. In general, yeah, we encountered, and we show on our test pit logs, if your general ground surface is 68, 69 in this area, uh, in general, may vary in a couple of places, but in general, yeah, your groundwater elevation is 65, 65, 1, 65, 2, 65, 3. So it's all right around between that four and five foot depth, both here where this is raised up and over here in the T turnaround, which is raised up, which does confirm what you say. It's about four feet down from the ground surface. So that's that's not something that's an unknown in that area. But the thing is, when my husband moved onto that land in 1959, there was just a little puddling out near the street. Now, my whole two front acres were underwater the last four months. The water's still there. I still have ducks coming there to swim every day. But, but I'm sure... So, all, the, all the building in that area has probably contributed to that, just not one house. The houses that are there, the houses that are around me were, have been there. Well, the, the two in the back were just recent rebuilds. Well, the, Kelly's house was just moved back. Right, but, but there was an existing house out front that they demoed, I believe. And the old it? house that was on Brisson Way, that was ripped down after we moved in. But my husband's lived on the land since 59, and, and even he, after seeing it, what, 60 years almost, has said that it's never been this bad. So something's going on that we're getting more and more water every year, and it's coming up higher and higher. Since they built the property, it's been silting. There's decomposition of material. It swarms silt and fine particulates and starts to silt up, you know. Okay. Hi. What's your name, sir? Tom Kelly. These are pictures of their property as it stands right now. Those are probably a month old. 
Uh, that property actually has is connected to the sewer system. Uh, there is a drain from me. that property into the catch basin. Like the water you don't want to say that. Looks there like it's built that way. It looks I like a water retention area that was designed by men. Uh, they were originally building this little machine. subdivision. That was stuck out and designed it. It's actually a right of way that was listed with the it town. Which is actually for pretty empty. For that pipe. It looks like a water retention area. I, 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 he, I says he, has, he says it, the, he has the right of way to put that water on the town. The town actually has right. the right of way onto that property for a drainage. And we still have more water than we've ever had. And I've lived there 40 some years. Well, nobody, nobody's allowed to tie in the town drainage system but the Basin, town. Well, there is, there is a pipe. Mm -hmm. If you check, this you'll find the right. It doesn't right. actually go to the drainage system. Just this is the this right. This, right. this is the yeah. So it runs this. into the drain or out no, of the no, drain? No, no, no. It runs into the catch basin somehow. Okay. This is this area, right? And I believe the pipe runs. Oh, yeah. This well, well, you're, that's, that's, your, that's not what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm he's talking about our drainage to. Oh, well, on their property. They can do anything they want on their property. It was completely knotted full with. Yeah, root. Because this yeah. Right. They own the property, yeah. they can the do what they want. But it, does, it doesn't lots. run into the yeah. town's drainage no, no, system. No, no, no. Sure. Well, it's 100%. 100%. It, does. it looks like it runs the lands of an old test pass. Yeah, if the water from that brook is running into the town drainage system, you just don't know it because the town is. No, what I'm saying is it's it's not it's not it's not a direct pipe in there. The person who lives in that house is a town employee and he works for the department. And he's got hoses coming out of his face with a sump pump. Going out to the street drain, the and then he's unfortunately, if you drive around town, a lot of people, a lot of people, still doing it right now. We've had a lot of Don't water this year. There's yeah. no, no but nothing trying to read that to that anything. This was a pre, this was existing. All it does is yeah. take the retention basis, and it's yeah. an outfall. Oh yeah, it's an outfall. And yeah. the it's reason awful. that yeah. we, those pictures are accurate, that water was there yeah. until Roto Ruta ran through the pipe, yeah, and the water was gone, and it hasn't been back since. Okay, yeah. If this, if these two pictures of the detention basin. We're so it, it is a retention basin. Yeah, it's not yeah, just that's a what's shown. That's what the, I was saying. These two yeah. pictures are the detention basin. One of them standing. One of them standing about this picture, standing looking up the spillway dike. Here, mm -hmm. there's the spillway in the middle, which is shown right about there, because yep. that's the new. That's the existing house. There's some of the equipment out in the back. This picture is just panned over a little bit, looking more. In that direction, across. So the water is where it's supposed to be, and the retention. It's in the area. basin, and and if that's a month ago, that's just about the time that I would it's say. It's been roofed since that. I would I would say that's around uh, the time we were having our heaviest precipitation. Yeah. Are you going to fill in the ex because it was my no, understanding we went to the meetings when no, the no, original no, no, house no, was okay. put in, and they put in that giant swale between where the new house you want to put in and Ditzel's house. And I was told, and we heard it at the meeting, that that swale pond retention thing on um, Grissom Way could never be filled in. It wouldn't be filled no. in. No, it's going to be filled in. That's filled. part of the approved subdivision that went out back. That stays. That stays. We're not having anything. That's no. We you couldn't fill. We couldn't fill that in. That so you're going to build a house here and run the aseptic past that swale hole. Correct. In a non pervious So it's not going to go correct. in there and come. Nope. Correct. No, 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 no. That swale. Oh. It's all in the design he's got for the system. Right. It's a pump up system that's got to go all the way up the street almost yeah. into that yellowed area. That will yeah. work the when there's no power. The basin. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they're all good. They're, they're all, all good for X amount of gallons right. oh, okay. before you have to worry about power being out. You're, you're but right. most people that have pump up systems have, a generator. have generators. And, yeah. and you have an alarm on the house. Yeah. Or, yeah. or solar. Is, yeah. Is she has a sump pump in her basement, and when we just lost power for four days, she had eight inches of water. In I have basement. I have three of them in my basement. I live right beside Olden Pond. You lose power, it, it, it's a bad thing. You lose power, you know you need backup yeah. for your sump pump. So everybody involved with this project can swear on their mother's grave right now that if you put that house in on the front lot, I'm not an engineer. I'm not swearing on anything. We're not going to see any extra water coming. I'm not an engineer. I'm not swearing on anything. We'll we can only review. Actually, from what <laughs> he just <laughs> said, you've, they've eliminated the water because they overrooted the pipe. Right. They've dropped the water out of right. the detention basin mm -hmm. down, which means the detention basin should absorb some of the water that's in your yards going that way in the ground. Anything the that was running off and going in water. 
attention. So if anything, it should help. Now at least running the other direction. Yeah. Take everything, on. everything from here, right? You can see where it dips down. Yep. Is now going that way. The retention basin now drains off that way. The impervious surface will be gone, so it can't drain this way. It will be sloped that way. And everything, as Terry said, as the house gets built here, will now be sloped to go this way. You're going from 72 feet down to 60, 68, 68 feet. So it doesn't build so that land up higher than Kelly's land. We're building the house land. up. And oh, so it if the house will, so in other words, the, what you were saying about the hydrostatic pressure on your foundation or your basement floor, mm -hmm. we're coming up higher so that doesn't happen. Which means the grade of the land will then slope to the street. The height of the so you're uh, not going to fill that lot in and bring it up higher so that water goes into him and from him to me. And everything from what did you say, Terry? Twenty feet off the back of the house will all go toward Bryson Way, which isn't happening now. So if anything, and I understand the concerns. Believe me, I yeah, my house I lived in Hanson for twenty is, something is, years and spent every time there was a power outage pumping out my basement and you know by hand because. <laughs> it's a nightmare, it, and the whole South Shore is. So I understand the concerns because I've lived through them, but this has truly been designed so that when this is done, that entire area benefits from what happened here. This is in no way um, an <coughs> adverse effect to that area. Everything that's been designed and everything that would be constructed would force the water back to Bryson Way, which, you know, either naturally or, you know, piped so that it's not heading in your direction. Okay, it's, it's not going to be a. So I'm just concerned so about we that. We need to, we need to yeah. move on here. Has anybody what? else got anything to say that hasn't spoke so far? Well, I just have a question that is some. Uh, I mean, I just say your name, my, please. Oh, Louise Bishop, okay. 44 Old Washington okay. Street. Um, I just want to know why my water is being shut off tonight, and what in regards to this project. They are going. doing a double gate tie-in for Old Washington Street for the new development. That's nothing to do with this board. It's actually the Department of Public Works. Uh -huh. um, there'll be water employees out there with Mr. Sealand to do the, the connection. And it's not actually to do with what the lot is. It's, it's not to do with no, this. No, it's no. to do with the, the other part of the subdivision, well, I believe. Yeah, so it says the new project at risk. Yes. The same way, but I was just kind of shocked that you know, to have to lose your water with. Well, they're, they're not, I believe they're not shutting it down till midnight. It says that. Nine to four. Yeah, nine to nine it'll, to four. it'll be later than that. I can, All right. I can so they have to cut into the pipe somehow. And they're going to be doing this overnight while we're sleeping. Yes. It, it's not, it, I don't think. It's not that. They, it's they, just -dug, the, pipe. the hole is pre dug. Oh, okay. So yeah. literally, when they shut it down, they're going to cut the pipe, means, put a connection tomorrow, in. if we want to do any laundry, we're going to have the usual. No, because they as soon as that connection's made, they're going to flush it. Okay. And that there should be no disturbance. So when she goes to take a shower, it's it. You know, take it with I, I, again, I'm not guaranteeing anything, but <laughs> we just did one of these on Furnace Lane, and we didn't have a water, okay. we didn't have a water complaint on Furnace Lane. It's all good. I and we shut Furnace we Lane. shut that one down at midnight and had it back on by five, I believe. Ten past yeah. five. Okay. Now is the same situation going to be true with the other eleven houses that you're going to put out back? So that's, we, a, that's uh, a unfortunately we need to we need to stick to this because yeah. yeah. we need to wrap this up because we have two more hearings. I'll show you after. So has anybody else got anything to say on this? No. Yes, sir. I can say is that property's been wet for a long time. I don't think it's fair to sell an expensive house to somebody who's going to have a wet yard a good part of the year. On our we it's really not we, we cannot on deny that. on that's on that kind of ground. It's not a the only response I'd have to that is that this lot will not be wet. There are wet spots. There's a hundred percent this lot out of many, many others is not going just the it's just the elevation. Remember it's either a swamp or a rock. Yeah. Take your pick. And <laughs> move it close. I'll second that. Everybody approve? Second? Aye. Yes? Okay. Aye. Aye. That part of the meeting's closed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What would you like to ask you move, move we build in according to the plan with, an, with our Maybe like normal yeah, some point. Point. <laughs> point. Do we need to vote on that too? Yeah. I'll second, second Bob's motion. Uh, motion. You told me it was going to go in. I'll you know, second Bob's motion. Everybody agree? Aye. Aye. Yep. That's a pass, Rachel. Okay. okay. I apologize. We now we're on to our uh, seven thirty hearing. We should for probably go back to uh, seven ten. Are they here? Yes. Oh, okay. I apologize. We're going to go back to our uh, seven ten, which is a request of determination of a pickability. Yeah. Pickability. I have a hard time with that too. Yeah. Pickability. RDA one hundred five Furnace Lane Smith. Are they in the building? Mr. 
Mr. Smith. I thought so. No. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess uh, should we vote? Should we vote to continue that? I think we should. Okay. Can I get a um, a vote to continue the? I'll make a motion to continue um, 105 Furnace Lane. Yeah. Can I get a second? Do we need a date, second. Rachel. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I just want to see the uh, agenda quickly to see what we have. Uh, at 7:40 um, uh, April 23rd. Okay, I make a motion April 23rd at 7:40 p.m. to continue 105 Furnace Lane. I second that. Everybody agree? Aye. 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 That one passed, Rachel. Good to go. Thank you. Okay, next one is 7:30. We're a little late. <laughs> Request the determination of applicability to RDA 17 Rebecca Road Sheehan. Yes. Come on over. Okay. We apologize for no, the no worries. I understand. The delay. My husband was supposed to be here, but he's traveling for business, so sure he is. I he, hope I can explain. He just said I'm gonna send you. That's <laughs> no, really I'm like <laughs> Okay. Notices hereby given for public hearing conducted by the Pembroke Conservation Commission under provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131. Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, on Monday, April 9th at 7.30, 8.15, in the Pembroke Town Hall to consider request of, the t boy, they love to put that word in there, don't they? Applicability. Applicability filed on March 21st, 2018, by Timmy and Christine Sheehan of 17 Rebecca Road, Pembroke, Mass, to construct an addition to an existing house located at the same address, shown as assessor's map, yeah. mm -hmm. C5, Lot 68. You're on. I'm on, okay. Um, so we already went through the zoning board and we got approval for a the zoning board. Okay. And so this is our next step to get approval through conservation. Um, we are adding sort of reconfiguring space for my husband for our home office. And with that going out further because that will take up our family room, so going out a little further. Um, we can't go any other direction we can't go to the back we can't go to the side we have the driveway and pond actually I, I feel like you've been out to my my home before maybe um and so this was really the only option um we've already talked to all of our neighbors nobody took issue with it they didn't go to the last so we should have this plan i think close yeah uh i've been here i've been be they've now before yeah, <laughs> well, I, feel uh, <coughs> I have no problem with the addition I have some reservations of how you're going to be able to protect the wetland line on the side of the house so there's you have a fence and it's yeah, showing this fence in other words if this fence is here and this wetland it's got to be 10 feet, eight, 8 to 10 feet below. It drops right off on a street. It's a dug, it's a dug drainage ditch from the old Cranberry Block. Okay. okay. Yeah. And it's vegetated good now. It's you no, know, and as long as we don't touch the vegetation on the, on the bank, then it's not going to be a problem. But you know, we're working. We don't have the exact map, but we're we're working. I would guess within eight feet. Yeah, we moved it back yeah. more. Um, yeah. I say it, it's it, it is a construction problem here, making sure that we don't get over the edge of the bank, yeah. and it comes off. Foundation wise, you know, I don't have a I don't have a problem as long as whoever does the contracting. I think I want to meet with whoever is doing it before anything ever starts, because we do have another. Well, I'll throw all the problems out first. Mm -hmm. is there was a whole group of pine trees here that have been taken down. Thank heavens. I think you must feel better. Thank God, yeah. But the stumps are 18 to 24 inch stumps along this area here, which as soon as you try to you're gonna, you're pull gonna them, you're going to be liable to pull the, the bank. I'm cons concerned yeah. about that. We might 
and I'm just throwing this out because I'm not the engineer. You might have to grind some of those yeah. stumps rather than trying to pull, pull them because those pines have got tremendous roots and they're yeah. bound to be over the side uh, and yeah. reaching for the water down in the in the ditch. Gotcha. Have you picked your contractor yet? Um, we have two that were considered uh, two that it's down to. We were waiting really before we went too far. Is there a, what's the foundation underneath this? Is it a crawl space, a full foundation, a slab? What, what's the process? Um, so that? underneath would be just a storage area for like uh, bikes or so lawn equipment. Be a, so be a, a yeah, full, 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 full yeah. base. Yeah, that'd be a yeah. full, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Um, we're but, uh, Stevie but on that side of Rick too, because if you haven't, Considering the house is sitting up, so we're only around. probably yep. going into the ground right. no. three or four feet at the yep. most because the house on that side right. sits right. high because it already is tapering right. off on that side. Because back yeah. close, remember, there what used to be yeah. a shed there too, yep. Yep. which is gone now. So, um, yeah, it this this is but was my well, other than it's close to the wetland, but I mean, it is the only place they can build, so yep. that's not a, a big problem that way for us because we've allowed it before but it is a construction problem that whoever's doing the foundation work or uh, sure. digging the hole the is going to have to be very careful and then it's going to be an over dig and then the for your just again you probably saying it but i'm going to call you there's not going to be enough room to go for equipment to go in here so when in other words when you're backfilling here, they're going to have to be able to come on this side and this side. I don't believe you're going to have enough feet, enough room between the corner of the foundation and the fence. Now, this, I kind of want to see this fence stay where it is. Yeah. And whatever we might ask for siltation barrier be put at the base of the, of the fence. Yeah. Because as long as the fence stays where it is, then the bank's going to stay where it is. Now it's whether or not we can get the work done in that kind yeah, of a of a tight operation, and it can be done as long as the contractor yeah. is where the stumps with, are. Yeah, are yeah. Looked, uh, looks like they got roughly about ten feet. Where yeah. the yeah. stumps yeah. aren't visible yeah. on this, I think that's a big thing, like you said, that they yeah. be dealt with properly. Yeah, well, I think we want to say you know. grind because yeah. they want they're they're oh, sitting he's got four no three or four feet off the fence. Well, you know how much pine roots are going to go, especially when they're looking for water. Right for water. So that's yeah. one's yeah. right on the other side of the house, right? Yeah, it comes over. It's a drainage ditch from yeah, the one bog to the other okay. years ago when it was there. And so, you know, one side of it's down low. This side happens to be the high side, and it's got a good, you looks know, like eight foot cut. So looks like they down. only got huh? a little over four and a half feet once the, the foundation's into the. Right. Fence. Yeah, that's what I say. It's, it's going to be, you're not going to get a piece of equipment, so you. When you're doing well, well actually, they're gonna have, they're gonna have see to, all this anyway. Right. Just, he, I'm he just seeing it ahead of time. Yeah. And he, he looked at the mantis space through there, no problem, actually. He didn't think he was gonna have an issue at all. Yeah. He's, he's, I mean, you can get a mantis through four feet, no problem. You can get them through three feet if you have to. But yeah, well, they can get they can, get, they can come it. in from the back side, yeah. but well, they, uh, it's gonna be a little high. Everything they dig out, they're gonna have to take off site. Right. In other words, they're not gonna be able to stockpile there. So I think we I think what we need to do is sit and make a few of our comments that have to be put in the one that material not be stockpiled on site, that stumps be ground, ground. That f are you getting all this, Rachel? <laughs> and that the fence is the limit of work, work and should not be altered at all. Altered now. Now, when I say altered now, maybe after you finish the house, maybe you want to replace it with something. But for the time being, anyway, it, yeah. it has, to has to stay there. there. That siltation barrier be at the foot, at the foot of the upper side of the fence. Oh. And trips. Working that uh, the trips. contractors Must should meet, meet with, with the, the agent. Yeah, with the agent before any work, work, is, any work is done. Okay. Which he's going to need to to get you out there anyhow to yeah. show you the the silt yeah. silt control anyhow. But, uh, so. but it, yeah, it's. And I say you you understand our our concern yeah, with yeah, what no, we have I, to, I, we, and I know you saw it before. Right, yeah, we it. we had wished we could go yeah yeah different yeah, direction. Yeah. Um, you got what you got. And yeah, you know, right. It's one of those situations. Other than that, I, 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 I 
What do we got? Determination? Yeah. Move it close. I mean, we can. I'll second that. Everybody. Aye. Aye. So move we uh, issue a negative three with the following conditions blah, 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 that we've been talking about. Okay. And I'll the oil plate. I'll second that. Great. All in favor? Oh, uh, yeah. Aye. Aye. Thank you. So what does that mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> negative three is, means you can, go ahead and, you can go ahead and do it. Okay. You'll get a set of orders. Right. From Rachel, then it's hot to how to arrange next steps. Yeah, and okay. then arrange everything. From Great. There. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank appreciate you. it. We try to make it quick and painless. Yes, I appreciate it. This is yours as well. Oh, um, that belongs in this one. That, that, that one goes in here. Okay. Yep. yep. I've got mine. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Have you. a good night. See you later. Do you want that file back? Do you want me to just put it in this file for right now? That's fine. All right. Okay. So the last one we got. What about a canoe club? Have you heard anything? Yeah, we need to continue it. Okay. Awesome. Two ways. Do I have a motion? I think when honestly, I I wouldn't even give it a date. I think it should be if we can. We have to. It, can, we have to give it a date. October sixteenth. Give it a month. From, <laughs> yeah. Oh, give it a, give it a month from now. <laughs> give it a month from now. Or so. January two thousand nineteen. Okay, I would then just continue. Go for a month. Mm. Yeah, I just have to see what meeting date we have and then. May 21st at 710. All right, I make a motion to continue 49 Canoe Club Lane to May 21st at 710. Second. Second. All aboard. Yeah. All aboard. All aboard. <laughs> All aboard. Uh, well, the Wolfman died last last week at clock, so what? we're in mourning. Yes. Oh, um, no, yep. No way. He did. Oh. Motion to yeah. <laughs> Vote to approve it, everything. Aye. 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 How's that? Great. What's the next motion we need? Move it close. Uh, I'll second that motion. No. 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 We uh, got permission to plant trees. Now we have to decide if we can afford the trees, and uh, that's. Needs to be talked about. The price of the trees is a dollar ten cents a piece on a thousand. They're plants. They're not uh, bare root. They're two by two by four, and then they're shipping. We have permission to plant upwards of at least a thousand trees on Bog 12 from the water department, and uh, I'd like to move forward that we go after these trees that have been on paper and in the bank for let's see. Do the math here. Any idea what the ship is going to be on, Emmer? Uh, that's around seven hundred dollars. That's the shipping. Wow. Um, We're going to get them for five hundred. Right. I'm just Holy saying cow. you can drive down. It's only in New Jersey, so you can take a little hike. But these have been um, in the bank since 2006, and it's a great opportunity to plant. Oh, whoa, 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 no! I'm, I'm going to. I want to strike okay, that because well, they haven't been in the. Back. These trees haven't been in the back because this is the first time we've talked about doing anything with the trees. No, so they we've just been been talk about this for no, weeks. No, we talked about it for the last year. Right, but you haven't so come up with a plan. The first time as far as about. Rick, I'm telling you, as far as I'm concerned right now, we don't have a plan before us to vote on. We need to know so need where to they're going. We do know where they're going. So perhaps a, a bog is not a plan. You need to know well, where on the block, how you're going to get on the block. Can, can you tell us? People are going to plant them. We have, hold on. Okay. Um, Peter from the Blooming Place just won their big trophy, the, the hockey uh, team this year. They have like 20 people and families to, to come and plant trees. The Mattachisa Country uh, Garden Club, they are totally into planting trees. Uh, the Blooming Village is anxious to come and plant trees. The public, everybody that I've talked to, is anxious to plant trees. It's Arbor Day. It's a great time to plant trees. And these are a tree you can order on Monday and have in two days. And they're in pots, so there's no danger of them getting wilted out. Um, we've been talking about these trees since I got on the board for five years, three years, four years, whatever it is. Um, we've been talking about trees, not these trees. Are you saying these well, trees? We're well, talking well. about trees. These we're trees trying to right find a place. We've been talking about these trees. I was given this piece of paper when I got on the board and that these signatures on the back and it's self-explanatory here how many trees were cut. 2,400 trees times three seedlings. 
provided by the Recreation Commission at the direction of the Conservation Commission at some time to be determined. Right. We've been trying to determine a time period to plant these trees for a couple of years, uh, at least. So we have talked about it before. I, I take conjecture with what you said about that. And uh, uh, we have not had a plan yet no, no, to plan. Perhaps, about perhaps we should define what you're suggesting a is a plan. It's just that we have a plan. I'm telling you what the plan is. And what you can do, we can put it in writing. My secretary can draw it up. She works for me as well as you. And we can go forward on this or not. The trees she does not work. She works for the board, not right. for I any said, one of us. No, I said me as well. I think that means a group, right? As well yeah. as the board. If the board so approves I didn't something say she works for, for me. Right. She works with us as a group, as a board, equally for all of us. Um, it's a clear document. Mm -hmm. It's stated. It's dated. So when I say 2006, that's what's on the. That's what it says here. Not what I'm making up. Um, well, no, we can't plate. use those trees. We don't have the money yet. So they weren't put in the bank. As yeah, they are. The money's in the bank. You got to get it back out of the bank. Okay. So, what does it take to do that? Give me a format. It's our, it already is in motion. So before give me a town meeting. Format of what we need to pursue and then it will be done. But I don't have to be running around like a, a bird dog trying to figure out what you're going to want me to do without telling me what you want me to do. You already, what, if you remember and put your thinking cap on, we said we would take money out of our funds so you could get started this year. We never said it was coming out of that funds because we haven't got to those funds yet. We have made arrangements with the Recreation Commission to put monies into our funds and all, but it won't be done until town meeting, if town meeting approves of doing it in that So that, that could be a separate separate issue, but right. we have the money to buy these trees to plant them are, There are monies that we can buy trees with, right, but it's not that, that so, particular so money. Just for the clarity then, and the public can know and I can know, where were these supposed funds put for these trees? They were cut clearly. It's right here in black and white. 2006, All right. 2,400 trees. There was says, never any funds. It doesn't say anything about funds. It says trees, seedlings. Right. Well, it says they, seedlings. They don't grow on trees. They're grown in nurseries and they usually charge money. Well, that would have been up. They were supposed to, and we've gone over this before. They were I'm supposed to, to do it. feathers or anything. I'm just trying to find out how we get the trees and get them in the ground. That's all I'm trying to do. Well, this is what we're, why we're looking for a plan. We have monies. We have said we'd spend our, our monies to plant the trees because it takes time for recreation to get whatever they were going to do. We have made arrangements now instead of recreation trying to buy the trees and then giving them to us that they would rather give us their some money so that we can handle it, cut them out of the middle of it. And that, as in all town things, takes time. And the first third of those trees, the money for one third of those trees at about a Correct me when I go. I think it's like a dollar seventeen cents a piece or something that we we've used for the, the money and recreation is proposing to have that money put into their budget this year and transferred to our tree fund and they'll do it for the next two years afterwards so that when at the end of three years we will have the full amount in our budget. In the meantime we have enough money to buy these trees for this Arbor Day plant. But we have enough money to buy these trees. We, we have monies in our accounts we can buy trees with. Now whether we have enough for, well, we can buy trees. You know, you're talking trees, and then you're spending another 700, which is almost is uh, two thirds of the yeah. trees. So, well, really, in my way of figuring, the trees are going to be costing us somewhere in the neighborhood of two dollars and ten cents a piece. I mean, you can cut it any way you want, but yeah. if it costs you 700, they send them a thousand. I mean, well, I mean we've, you've talked a thousand. We've been talking five hundred. I yeah. mean, we haven't come up with a. I, I said let's so settle for seven fifty, and nobody took the. Yeah, nobody said anything. I mean, that's that was kind of dropped at that time. But I, counter, that's the first know. thing I think the board needs to decide is, are we are we going with five hundred, seven fifty, or a thousand? Well, if you've got a three year plan, and there's two thousand four hundred trees times three, I would say then it would be a 
2,400 trees per year. No. We didn't say we were planting no, them all in one year. I'm not saying and that. You, and just so you know, I'm not going to vote to no. do it. I think we should be buying bigger trees around town to replace some of the, perhaps some of the trees that well, have, have come down rather than planting well, little ones on the bar. That's not what this says. This is clearly a document signed and dated that was given to me by you. Yep. And I think it clearly states in any type of logging, which is what that was, it was 2,400 trees, that's logging. Somebody made money on those trees. And that when you do logging, you replace three to one. That's just boilerplate logging. Well, 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 you're, you're mixing. I'm not. Like, I'm just saying. You're I'm talking about logging. This has got nothing to do with logging. Well, this, this okay, has so nothing to do with the logging part of it at all. So replacing the trees three to one is not what they do in logging. That's just a. Well, it's problem. nothing to do with the log. The logging up on that project was a separate thing. This is only so. because they wanted to cut trees on a town forest. And isn't it boilerplate that if you cut a tree, you plant three in logging? I don't, this it, but, had, but the logging part of it was a separate I, I didn't, group. I'm just saying, I didn't put this together. This is somebody else's document. Did somebody says, say logging in there? Um, well, when you cut a tree, it's pretty much either you're harvesting, that would be logging. I mean, unless you're just chipping them and throwing them away, and I don't think they chipped all these and threw them away. I mean, that would be logging but that to me. I'm not saying that, I'm right. That didn't enter into, you're, you're mixing oranges and apples now. Well, I don't know what part of mixing, because this is what it says to me. That says that Maybe they would really replace trees. I, Right down here. I'm going to go forward and say. Mm. Um, Just read that. And I'm, I'm going to go forward and say. It sounds like different projects, perhaps, and this is why I think it sounds like there's, the, trees that were cut down, at Mattakesa Street Ball Fields. Yeah. And then there's the suggestion to print trees in the bog next to the rotary, and mm. I think in order for us to vote as a commission. We probably should see a written plan that says, on this day at this time, these individuals volunteer to do this. The trees are going to be purchased from the XYZ place at a cost of this there and describe the tree so that we all are on the same page mm -hmm. and we can see what it is and then we'll vote. As far as where the money comes from, it sounds like there's money for the Andruck um, Rotary bog planting. Well, it's bog 12 now because well, okay. Rotary is Maybe. tied up with the DEP. Oh, it's not. See, that's why we need a plant, so well, we know what. Bog 12. That's what we planted them for. So I'm making a suggestion that it get written so we all are agreeing on the same thing instead of all the different pieces that are somewhat conflicting so that so see do, it. do we want to make that into a motion and get it seconded, or how, how do we want to do it? Right. Well, the, the one problem we have is that we're getting close to the day when what we day want to start planning. Day? So 26th and 28th. 26th April? through the 28th of this month. Of April. So we, we do have one more meeting in between now and then, but that we should we should I end it I hand it out now. Uh, I agree. I think the first thing we need to know is how many trees are we going to settle on. I mean, because that any figures we use are based on that. And I think the number of trees is partly determined by the people who are going to plant them. Right. Right. And then I'm not. Do we have a certain group of people that have stepped forward? Oh yes, we do. We have three yeah. groups of people that have stepped forward, plus the public on top of that. And usually the vets come and they like to plant trees too. Do we have? Do we have a minimum? We have to order to get for shipping or um, for shipping you can order 500 the price goes up 1000 is the the cheaper and nothing's cheap i don't mean it as that mm -hmm. because it's a lot of money and i understand that but it is a lot of money but um it, it just pretty much i didn't make this up i didn't write it there's the figures it says times three um the signatures are on the back it's been since 06. But I'm thinking this is None independent. None of these trees. Yeah, that's, we yeah. can, this is that independent. Is, we aren't even looking at that that's right now. That's independent so, from the we don't 12 that. planting that you're discussing. It's totally separate. So those trees are not going to come off of this list? Um, I would think that if you buy them, they should at least come off the list. So that's that amount off that, that list. That would be for the board and all to decide right. Just, later. I right now, we don't, have, we don't have a choice because we don't have that money. We have other money, so we just need yep. to decide whether we can. Right. So we have, them we, and we have said that we would back the tree planting project. 
so do, do we, we have any idea proposal what and, we're getting from recreation has that figure come up or? yeah it figure and i don't it's it's a dollar and a few cents is the is the figure they used for the value of the seedlings in other words so I, they're, I, they've already predetermined right what they're going to give money, us they're, they're all that that all that paperwork is all taken care of and it it should be in the town warrant this year it's there it's in other words it's scheduled to be before the april or whenever the, yeah. the town meeting is are we and i'm asking because i don't know a lot of this stuff but we guaranteed that the money they give us if we spend this money on these trees right now that we're going to get that money back in the account that we're going to take these trees yeah. out of yeah otherwise they they because i they know a lot of voted. times they shift funds and everything goes to the general yeah, yeah. no no sure. they, they have voted it has been cleared out through selectman's mm -hmm. office and all that through recreation through their people that they are uh, are going to pay one third of what we the bill would have been for whatever number of trees times a dollar in some odd sense now i 17 cents is what rings my bell you know uh, right now but it might have been it might have been nine it might have been something else they you were coming up with different different numbers but it was all of the dollar something less than a dollar and a quarter but more than 500 trees 500 trees are a dollar 35 a piece okay plus, plus shipping 1,000 trees are one dollar ten cents. There's yeah, well, that's all, that isn't boxes. what the figure they were using when they when we came up with this with the recreation paying was it was something that came out of the tree department's numbers and everything else. Scott, uh, Scotty Scott, Ripley, must Scott have Ripley brought figures to the selectman's office, and Sabrina worked with recreation to come up with the thing. Recreation voted it at a meeting. And but all. nothing happens till after the but it has to, to go to transfer through, yeah, it has meeting. to go through town meeting yeah and it already has been taken care of at the accountant's office when the money is transferred that will be transferred right into our forestry account in other words all that part of it will happen it's all all and this is what it's i talk about works. trying to get a plan together right. it's all in line it's just so, taking time originally uh, uh, my recommendation was um to plant six four to six inch caliber trees out in the ballpark in the green areas because yeah. if you drive by there i don't know if you guys drive by there on the weekend but it looks like tent city and, and it's because people are looking for shade and that was i i didn't push it anymore because i kind of lost touch with it i had so many other things on my plate but to me that would be putting it back where we took the trees from well to me that they were evergreen trees and they make oxygen 24 7. So to put another species in that doesn't make oxygen 24-7, you're depleting the actual oxygen supply the trees make. That's how we live in this land. Uh, but I, grace, I think, we live in this I, unfortunately, I think we the, depleted that by the 10 grace, years ago. By the grace of the trees that make oxygen, we live on this planet. And We don't, do, we don't disagree with that. So right, I like my it, point but that's is some... that if you take out 20... 2,400 trees that are evergreens. They were, whoa, whoa, whoa. How the, said they, who said they were evergreens? They um, weren't, I, I they weren't, they weren't all evergreens. They weren't evergreens. Was Most of them was hardwood. There was a lot of oak that came out of there. Yeah. Well, the stuff I saw going off to the mill was definitely not oak. All right, so there but was my a, point that I'm trying to make, if, I said if, the upper word was if, okay? If you take a thousand pine trees down and you plant six non, you know, evergreens, and yeah, it might look good, but you're really not replacing the ecosystem, the amount of oxygen in the future of the trees or the forest. And I think we have bogs that are, you know, being run by invasive species from Europe. They're being taken over. When are they, they making any oxygen? All right. And not 24/7. No. Seven, no. So they, well, no, are they making any oxygen? Are they no, making they're some? They're not making what an evergreen makes because it makes more oxygen. You know that. I know that. So you can argue that. You know ducks and, and quacks and, and birds, oh. but bottom line, an evergreen is alive all year. It makes oxygen all year. A lot of the trees, in my opinion, for what it's worth, were evergreens. I don't think taking 2,000 trees and planting six over here is gonna really do the balance of the carbon footprint or the oxygen, and that's what forests do. Um, I'd like to add, just listen to the commission members. There's, um, I've heard three locations, I've heard 
and the uh, rotary bog, which is now mm -hmm. gone. Then I've well, heard, it's on hold, not, not gone. It's just then I've heard a location of bog 12, and I've heard um, also the location of the Mattachies of ball fields. Yep. Then the next part I've heard is discussion of the type of tree. Um, so there's a discussion, should it be just evergreen? Should it be a combination of evergreen and deciduous? Um, and I've heard discussion for the reason for the trees to be there. Is it just to um, replace? Is it for although valuable, um, the oxygen, shade for the people um, at the, the ball field. So we have so many um, parts of the discussion. I'm, I'm asking maybe the members suggest, how do we nail it down? It's ha this is where it is. This is the number of trees. This is the cost, the location, the time, the place, the volunteers. Um, do we want to continue it tonight? Do we want perhaps someone to nail it down? the description so we know what we're voting on. I think we should take notes and nail down a document that does the description tonight. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. Like you said, it's person, place, thing, time. Trees. It's a fairly simple, straightforward process. There's no reason we can't plant those trees at the ball fields as well. And then the other part of the discussion was should they, what type it should it be? Bigger trees, little trees, what the mortality rate is of the different size trees? When, when we I, could be here. When I went before the boards and um, took the lead on this for the windswept bogs, we determined there was a 97 foot deep peat bed there that was definitely created by North Atlantic cedar trees. There was a cedar swamp. There were some remaining stumps out in the back. Um, my brother actually said that when he was digging there to remove the gravel that sank, and that's how he found out there was a peat bed there, that he was pulling up pieces of white cedar. Um, it's a no-brainer that it, anything that's a peat bed that deep was a was a big cedar swamp. But everything around here was a great cedar swamp. There's not a mature tree left in Massachusetts that's left cut. They were taken before we were a country. They were taken out of here. So they were a tree that was an important ecosystem on this part of the coast, from Maine to Canada. It's a coastal rainforest, and we have a chance where there are bogs that were. A lot of them cedar swamps, that was the secondary use after they cut the trees down to take out the hard brush and make cranberry bogs. My father did cranberry bog, you know, construction and pulled big stumps out with cranes. I've seen it my whole life. Cedar trees create sphagnum moss peat beds. They lock up the nutrients, they lock up the water, they purify it, they cool it down and they make oxygen 24-7. I went through this when we did the discussions to do bog 12 and bog 12 is a good location for these trees. Um, any bog is a good location for these trees. Yeah, yeah. I move we buy 500 of trees if they want. The, the white cedar trees? Oh, white, cedar, the white cedar trees will be planted this year. Discussion to continue. Uh, I believe that we can plant white cedar trees and still have monies to plant cedar trees, and I think we, we should have. But I, we, I, I would go along working with the project, but I don't believe we need 3,000, 8,000, 10,000 cedar trees planted. I think a small group planting will be, be fine, and we do the uh, rest of it. The trees that were cut down were there for some of the beauty and all of the area, and they weren't all pines. They were a mixed wood because they clear, they clear cut the front part of it. You, you're, you're, you were mixing up two different projects. There was a, a thinning project for the town forest. There was one thing. The other one was a clear cut of the ball fields. And these, the monies that you refer to are from the clear cutting. Nothing okay. to do with, with the thinning of the town of forest. Of the town forest. Now, would the same company and the same equipment do both those jobs at the same time? One Not at the same the time, but they did both. Like one following nope. the other. Yeah, one was following yeah. the other. So right. it was the same company doing this. The removal of the trees. Yeah. But it, two know, different contracts. Yeah, but two, two, two different, different entirely, contracts. Entirely different contracts. So this one is just for the clear cut of the ball fields. This is just for the right. This right. Is for the so clear cut of the ball fields. The thinning project goes without any trees being planted. Yeah. Well, so that, I think I, that was to help the forest. Clear -cut. Wasn't it? The, the thinning was to help the forest. Thinning was the, done after uh, our forest foresters went in, went in there and decided what had to be cut, what should be cut, was tagged, and everything else. And I'm, and all that for, was I'm, I'm all for it. Like, I, you know. 
over my course of my life, I've seen forestry come in. They did it at uh, the bicentennial. It was a little rough at first, but you can see it really worked. It's yeah. it, it worked. I have a question. I have a question about your motion. Okay. If you uh, made a motion to purchase 500 white cedar trees, white cedar trees plus, plus the um, plus the shipping, plus the shipping. What what's to be planted on Bog 12? I. When? For Arbor Day. Or For Arbor, Arbor Day. Day. Arbor Day weekend. That, and that we, we appoint uh, Rick right. and Arthur as Elite. our representatives for this planting. This okay. is a, this is nothing, now, this okay. is a single yep. planting. No, I agree. It's a, it's a good move okay. forward. I'll second that motion. Everybody agree? Aye. Aye. Good. Aye. I make a motion to adjourn. adjourn. Awesome. I agree. Okay. And we can work out the details on who's right. going to come forward and plan. All right. That's, that's it's on right now. It's on your. We we voted on putting it in your hands. So we, how do we get the order? How do we get the order? Do we have to send the order to Rachel or? Well, we can work with us. Yeah.